No, good morning, everyone. So I welcome you back to this uh, uh, lecture series on data communications. And uh, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the error detection and correction method. So in the previous classes, we started with uh, the introduction to the data communications. And then we talked about the, uh, the model that is used in computer networks. And TCP IP is the most popular model, model. And uh, we started our discussion with respect to the TCP IP model. And uh, there are uh, five layers in that. That is a physical layer, a data link layer, network layer, transport layer, and the application layer. And uh, among these five layers, we talked about the physical layer first, where we defined uh, I mean, differentiated between the data and signals, how the uh, signals, I mean, data are converted to the digital signals, and later how they are converted to analog signal, an analog signal back to the digital signal. What do you mean by the switching techniques? So those are the uh, functionalities of the physical layer. So the next layer, the second layer, that uh, we have to understand is the data link layer. And in data link layer, I told you that there are two uh, operations or functions. The first one is the error control mechanism. So it is the uh, function of the data link layer to control the error. It means to detect the error and ask for retransmission in some cases. And in other cases, uh, it will not only detect the error, but it will also correct the error. And the second uh, job of the network layer, uh, which is called as a MAC layer. So there are two sub layers in the data. Layer. The one which deals with the error control, the another one is a MAC layer, means a medium access control layer, which we will discuss later. In this class, we will focus our discussion on error detection, and correction methods. Fine. <clears throat> now let us see that why this uh, error will occur. So error means we are transferring, we are transmitting certain bits. Let us assume that we are transmitting six bits. Let's make it eight bits. So this is one frame that is being transmitted through a medium to the destination node or to the next immediate node where this data is to be received. Now, during the transmission, because of interferences, because of interference, like from from the noise or uh, because of some other reason, it will create an interference. And because of this interference, the pattern that the bit, what we are sending, the, uh, what we call the frame that what we are sending will not be the same one. So I may have, or I could have received, instead of the fourth one here, the fourth bit is one, Instead of one, I received it as zero. So all other bits are as it is. Right? So this is called as error. <clears throat> okay. Now the error can be of two varieties. The error can be a single bit error. Right? Or it can be a multiple bit errors. Okay. So this multiple bit errors is called as burst errors. Okay. <clears throat> so we have a single bit error or a burst error. So if I take a burst error, this could be like this. So
Okay. So this is the bit, the data that we are transmitting, right? And the received data bits are in error. It means some of the bits are flipped. In this case, only one bit is flipped from, from one to zero. Fine, from one to zero. So here, the fourth bit is one. Here in this case, the fourth bit is flipped to zero. In the second case, there are three bits. The first bit, the fourth bit, and the fifth bit. So this is my first bit, which is one. Yes. Let me make this as zero. The first bit is flipped to zero. The fourth bit is also flipped from one to zero. And fifth bit, it is flipped from zero to one. So we see that there is a single bit error. So such, such situation is called as a single bit error. Whereas this situation where more than one bits are corrupted, they are called as a burst errors. And burst errors are more common when compared to the single bit errors. That is because, see all these information, as I told you in uh, some coding, we are going to code them, right? So we are going to represent them as some form of pulse, correct? some form of pulse, right? So this is the one pulse that I'm having here for the fourth bit. So this, okay, this pulse gets inverted. So uh, the error, as a two, okay, okay. So there, there is two kinds of error that we observe. One is, uh, yeah, well, we are talking about uh, uh, the reason for the, uh, common burst errors. Okay, sorry for that. So what is what we are talking? Uh, what we have to understand here is see all these bits are represented by a pulse. But if you look at the nature of the noise, the interferences, this pulse width is generally much wider than the pulse width of our information of the data. And hence, instead of just corrupting one bit, we observe more number of bits are corrupted. Right? So in error is caused because of some interferences and there are two kinds of errors. Now the objective is of uh, the uh, data communication designers is to see that this error is identified, right? We have to identify this error. We have to locate which bit is corrupt and we can or we may not correct the errors, right? So where uh, why do we need uh, only detection, correction and detection both? We will take with our later discussion. We will see what is the reason, right? Okay, so whether it is important for us to identify this error and develop an algorithm to correct our error or a mechanism to overcome this error, right? So I, I hope you're getting my point. So I have to correct this error or I have to develop a mechanism to overcome this error. So how can I do that? So I have, now the job is how to correct this error or detect this error, how to handle it, right? So for this, what we can do is, let us assume that I am taken a block of data. This is my data, okay? What we can do is we can append with some extra bits. Some extra bits I'm going to, we are not going to append, right? So what I'm doing here is we are doing a coding, right? We are going to append some extra bits. This process is called as redundancy. Okay, what we are doing? for the data, using the data, we are computing some extra bits. Let's call this as R number of bits, okay? And our data size is some K number of bits. So you take K number of bits from this big frame, okay? It could be even be in eight bits, so nothing wrong. So we are taking a section of the data and then we compute a code, okay, we will compute a code which includes an extra bit. So which includes 
these redundant bits with my k bits. Now, this portion of k bits is called as data one. Whereas these are redundant bits. Okay, data word and redundant. And this complete set, this whole combination of K plus R, which is of N bits, is called as pole. So this is of size N bits, which is K plus R. So what we are doing, what is the idea is, take this K bits, compute some information from this K bits, that can be used to identify, to detect, to locate, or we can even correct that errors. Okay, use some algorithm, which is called as a coding algorithm. We are coding our data, right? Resulting into what is called as a code word. The code word consists of now two parts, data word and also the redundant bits. This process is called redundancy. Okay, so we are appending some redundant bits. Now, what is happening here? Okay, what is happening here? This kind of mechanism is a one-to-one -one map. One-to-one -one mapping. What actually it means? So, if you see here, I'm having a space of these k bits, right? So, there are k bits size of data word. And we are mapping each of these data word to a code word space. So we have a space of code words. So there is some code word that is there. And we are mapping one to one. So if I'm having some, N, uh, some capital M number of data words, all those are mapped. So there are some values. Let's take that there are four four code words, okay? And we are mapping it to four, oh, sorry, four data words. We are mapping it to four code words. So this is called one-to-one. -one. Okay, so this is a one-to-one. -one. So what, what we have to observe here is, because of this, let's see what is happening. So there are four code words I'm using 00, 01, 10, 11. So these are my four data words. And some mechanism I will use, which we will discuss, a very popular technique. So I will convert them to 000, 011, 101, and 110. Okay, so what we are doing here is, we are appending these redundant bits for each of this data word. So for each of the data word, this is my one data word, right? Now, when I append it with my redundant bit, I get this as a code word, right? So observe this. There are n number of bits now. Here in this case, there are three bits and there are k bits in this data word. It means we have two. So we have two rise, two possibilities, whereas here we have two rise, three possibilities. What we have to observe is, does we have all the eight possibilities at the code word side? No, right? We are, since this uh, uh, coding technique is a one-to-one -one mapping technique, we are left out with two rise, three minus two rise, two code words. That is four code words are left out. Now, these are called as uh, illegal code words. Okay, they do not belong to this. It means what we have to observe is in this big space, only a subspace of it are the legal code words. And other four code words, what I see here, somewhere I just brought in, other four code words, what I'm seeing, they are all illegal. This is a very, very important concept for us to remember. Okay, so a coding is, a coding is, this is, take your data word, compute a redundant using any algorithm, 
to generate a code word. And since this is a one-to-one -one algorithm, not all the codes are legal. Few codes are illegal. So if I receive a code which does not belong to this space, if I receive a code word, there is a okay, sorry. If I receive a code word which does not belong to this space, we call that as illegal code words. And that is the idea behind the error detection. You received a code, a code which comes in the illegal space, you just reject it. Okay, discard those, uh, uh, those data words. So you don't consider them because they are corrupt. Right? So there are uh, we're using this idea of, of legal and illegal codes. Now, it is very, e we can easily observe that uh, we are able to detect the errors. There is a method to detect the errors. Now, uh, we also, it is also possible using this idea that we are able to correct this uh, kind of errors. So, we will see two kinds of algorithms in this discussion. One is the error detection algorithms. And the second class will be error detection and correction. So both will be there. Right? So error detection is very much simpler when compared to the error correction algorithm. Means the complexity of the algorithm is pretty much uh, very less when compared to the error detection. Okay. So uh, in, in computer networks, in wire networks, especially in wire networks, we are able to do the error detection only. We prefer to go with error detection. That is because we can know, you know, from, from which port the data is received, from which medium the data is received, because there is a guided medium in, in a wire, it is a guided medium, right? They are connected. And it is very easy for us to request for the retransmission. So in wired networks, we use error detection. And what is the mechanism to overcome the error is for the retransmission, request for the retransmission. But in a wireless medium, we cannot identify the actual uh, direction from which the data is received. Okay. In that case, the request for the retransmission will be not possible, or it is difficult to uh, request for retransmission. And in that case, in wireless transmission case, we go with the error detection and correction mechanism. Okay. So the first section of this uh, uh, topic we will I mean, discuss on error detection algorithm. Okay, we will discuss on error detection. Now let's see how it works. So in the error detection, we have a data word. Okay, so we need to start with k bits of data word. And we will call for an algorithm called as generator. which generate this code word, right? I mean, which will generate that redundant data. Using the data word, it, only we are going to generate this code word, or sorry, redundant data. And then we will construct what is called as a code word. Now, this is what we observe at the transmitting side. So I'm having some bit zero, zero, and I have generated a redundant bit there in as we did on your previous example, zero, and we have generated a code word. Now this will be transferred through this medium. So at the receiver side, I'm going to receive back this code word. And the inverse of the generation will be, uh, algorithm need to be devised or it will be used, which will generate we call this as checker. Let's call this as checker, which will check 
that uh, uh, what is that redundant bit is been obtained and then if it is if it is accepted okay if it is accepted then we will generate the data one okay so in this case i received my 00, zero as a code word here right and then the checker will do it has computed that the redundant bit that is added is same as what it has been generated. So I have to generate the same redundant bit. That, that's very obvious. Or some other uh, code need to be generated, which can be used, right? So after this, since the redundant bit here and here are same, my checker is able, you know, this example I'm taking, now both redundant bits are same. Now checker will discard this last part of my code word and it will forward this to the upper layer. So it says that the data has been properly received. If there is an error, instead of zero, if I receive one, so instead of zero, I'm receiving the redundant bit one, which is not same as the one which we generate, okay? So in that case, this data will be discarded. It will not be further processed for uh, the error correction. So that, that's not our uh, object. Only the error detection is what we are going to do. So this is the basic idea of the error detection algorithm. Now we also need some mathematical uh, uh, definitions for these things to say that uh, what are the uh, constraints that we might come up with. Okay, so some mathematics need to be uh, discussed here. So for that sake, we are going to use a very popular concept in coding here. It's called Hamming distance, right? So what is an Hamming distance? So I'm having two words, okay? I'm not now calling them as a data word as a word word, some word I am having. One, zero, zero, one. So this is my first word, X1. I'll consider my the second word. My second word will be one, zero, one, and one. So what is this is my second word. Okay, so we need to compute what is called as D, Hamming distance. So let's call that as D. Now this D, we can compute by performing the, or uh, the Hamming distance is computed by performing the XR operation of these two bits. So if I perform the XR operation, this is the result. Now, how many bits? The number of bits that are uh, there, which represent the difference. Here I see that there is only one bit in the difference. So we call this as Hamming distance. Now, what is the significance of this Hamming distance with respect to the uh, what we call our uh, error detection? What is the significance? I mean, we have to understand what is that minimum distance that is there in order to detect? Okay, what is the minimum distance? See, whenever we develop an algorithm, it is not necessary that always it should correct. I mean, it will, it will give the good, correct results. It, it will sometimes fail. Like, let us take this example, okay, which we discussed, what, what I'm trying to say is. Now you see, these code words, which you see in the green circle here, we call that as a legal. We have transmitted 00, zero and the error has generated 011. One. This is the actual transmission, 000. zero, zero. But it has generated, the error has generated 011. One. So what will be the answer for this? This is a legal code, right? You cannot say that the data is corrupt. It is a legal code then because it is there within this, even though it is not a correct code, right? It is a legal code. Now, I mean, what do you mean? What do you mean to say with this? Okay, let us have much more clarity with this, with this exam. So I'm generating this zero, zero, zero. So here I got zero. And uh, what is actually happening here is, since there are 
whenever I have an even number of bits, I will put it as zero. Even number of ones, like for zero, zero and one, one, you will, you will write it as zero as a redundant bit. Now I am receiving this as zero, 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 zero. right? So this value, I will get it as zero. So if I do the XR operation, still I'll get it as zero. Okay. Now, if there are, if I receive these two bits, what will happen? If I take instead of 0, 0, 0, I compute the XR operation of this, I got this 0, and hence I have taken this as a data word as 0, 0. But now I received 0, 1, 1, right? So if I compute the XR operation of it, again I will get it as 0. I'm computing the XR operation. What I'm doing? I'm computing the Hamming distance, right? So again, I got this zero. It means that I will discard this and I accept it as a correct data. So what is that minimum distance that we should keep is what the Hamming will give us. So if I'm, as a, I'm having a space and if I assume that I want to find out some yes number of errors, detect some yes number, one bit, two bit, three bit, doesn't matter. So there are some yes number of matters. S number of errors. So my space, so if I take this as X is my code word, this is having this radius. The space is having a radius of this, right? So all these codes are legal codes. They're all legal codes, right? Now, how can I detect an error? Only when I find a word which is beyond this space, the one only here, are the one I can only detect, not the one within this green colored space. So this distance is what we call as D minimum, which I can say your S value plus one, just one more if I take, then the minimum distance that should be, uh, we have to maintain is the one those we are beyond this space. So this is called as minimum harming distance. So which gives us an idea how many, uh, whether we are able to detect the error. Okay, so I hope that you understood this concept. No? It starts with my legal and illegal quotes, then uh, the algorithm that we are using and the this justification using the harming distance, right? So for error detection, D minimum is equal to S plus one. So that is uh, what S, where S is the number of errors that we want to detect. So the idea of this uh, error detection algorithms are very simple. You take the data word, there should be an algorithm that will generate the redundant bits. You append that data word with the uh, redundant bits to generate what is called as the code word. Use this code word, use an analog inverse of the generator algorithm to generate again the redundant bits and, and uh, use the some logic to tell whether it should be accepted or discarded. So that's what the checker has to do. And if it is accepted, take only the data word and forward it. And if it is if not accepted, you just discard it, right? So it cannot detect all sort of errors. The algorithm, we need to uh, develop a mechanism. So that's where the lot of work has been done in this domain. The mechanisms are developed, you know, studied again and again to, to develop a very matured algorithm of what we see, which is called a cyclic redundancy codes. So there, are, there must be now the class of algorithms, obviously. So there are two class of algorithms. Okay, in this, in this uh, what do you call the error detection. One is called as block. They're called block coding. The another one is called as uh, convolution coding. Okay, but the scope of, of our syllabus is uh, limited uh, only to the block coding. Okay, so we are not going to take all the algorithms uh, I mean, both the class of algorithms. Instead, we are going to look at only on the block coding algorithm. 
and convolution coding algorithm is not the scope of the syllabus because of its complexity, you know, the time it takes to understand. So in block coding is what we are going to discuss. And in this, we are going to see varieties of very interesting algorithms. Like we are going to start with linear coding, very simple algorithm and very, very popular. And there is another one, which is called a cyclic redundancy codes, CRC codes. I think you should have heard this. Whenever you're dialing, downloading a file or doing something, you'll get this CRC code. And uh, there is one more very, very popular algorithm, which is called as a checksum. Right? So three class of algorithms are what we are going to discuss in our syllabus. Okay, so hope that you have got the point of uh, the error control and uh, mechanisms, right? Okay. So let us take, uh, uh, continue our discussion with linear block codes. So I'll not write them as a block coding. So we'll write that as uh, linear block, uh, linear codes. Now, what is the idea of this linear? Okay, the, the block code, the very basic idea of the block code is what we discussed here. This is, this is an idea of block. You, you take a small block of the data, then you compute the redundant and construct a code. Root. That is the idea. Okay, so what I have to do? I'll take code one. Let me data one. So let me call this as A3. A2, A1, and A0. This is my k bits of data. So this is my data. Word. I will use this data word into an algorithm. Right? So let me call that as previously discussed. I'll call this gen or generator. So this generator will use, we'll take this four words or four bits as an input. Okay, so we need to first generate a redundant. Now, what is the algorithm that we use in the generator? So this linear quotes is called as parity check quotes. Parity check quotes. Okay. It will generate the parity of it. I mean, whether it is an even parity or, a, or an odd parity. If it is a, an even, then that output of the generator will be a zero. If it is an odd, the output of this generator will be one, bit one, right? So I'm using four bits given to this generator. It will generate either an even parity or an odd parity, means zero or one. So let me call this as R. Zero. Why R zero? Why not just R? Because R zero specifies me that it is of one bit, only one bit. Now we need to append. So let it append it. So take this A three. We have this A two. We have this A one, and this is of A. A0 and I will append my R0 at the last. This is where I'm appending. Okay, so because of the space, I have written generator here. It is better to put it here. Okay, so that you can have a very good block diagram. So uh, let me take that. My R0 is kept here. So this is my code one. Now, what is R0 here? What is the R0? The algorithm. What is that algorithm? It will generate this R0, which is a parity check. Okay, it might be either zero if there are even number of ones, or it will be one if there are odd numbers. So now this is what I am receiving, right? This is what I am receiving. Okay, so what I received is A3, A2, A1, A0, and finally R0. Now this will go into what is called as checker, 
Okay. Okay. So what is going to do? So it will check. So we are having this check curly. Okay, so all these five bits are given to this checker. Okay, excuse me for this uh, poor drawings that I'm doing. Okay, so I hope that it will not uh, disturb you much. So this checker will generate a, like in our generator, it used to generate a redundant. Right. So here I'm going to call this data as information as syndrome. What is this? Syndrome. Again, this is one bit. What is the idea? Again, we will use whether this is a even bit or a parity. Okay. I mean, uh, uh, sorry, it, it is an even or an R bit. And if this S naught is equal to the uh, zero, then we will accept it or else we are going to just reject it, okay? So this syndrome uh, will be used as an input to my decision logic. Okay, so we are going to give this as my decision logic, right? So this is what we did here, right? Same thing, we are going to take the decision. So decision logic, if it is accepted, it is forwarded. The decision logic takes this input. If it is not accepted, then it will be rejected. I mean, it will be discarded. So when it is rejected, okay? So if it is accepted, we will be able to construct the original code very accurately, the data is being received. So this algorithm is called as parity check algorithm, which is a very popular, like I'm using this tab, this writing pad uh, through the USB and uh, uh, a simple uh, parity code. Okay, so a simple parity code uh, can do very good job here. So what is the what is the logic? So let us write the logic for uh, both the things for the generator and also for this. So how do I generate this R not? This is a not plus a one plus here I'm having a three. It could be n number. Okay, let's not worry about it. So this is mod two. Okay, so if I'm having zero, one, 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 zero, one, 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 mod two, okay, this is three mod two, the result R naught will be one. And for the syndrome, we are going to use the logic as A3 plus A2 plus A1 plus A0 plus S naught. Right. So if I take this example, I am sending 0, 1, 1, 1, and R naught as 1. Now let us take this 1, 1, 1, 1. So if I add all this, so it is 4 mod, 4 mod 2. So again, I'll do the mod 2 operation. So this will be 0. Since my syndrome is 0, I'm going to accept it. If it is 1, I'm just going to reject. So let us see that example. So instead of uh, uh, receiving this zero four ones, I received this as zero three ones and zero, which is mod two is one, right? So three mod two is one. So since I'm having one, I will just reject it. Okay, so this is uh, what is about the uh, uh, very popular algorithm called as a parity check algorithm, fine? So in the next class, we will talk about the cyclic redundancy code, which is a very interesting algorithm that can be you now implemented in different ways. Uh, there uh, we will we'll start with pen and pencil method, and then we'll go for the polynomial method. And uh, we will also see that that algorithm can be implemented uh, using simple digital circuits. 
Okay, so that's it for this class. Uh, thank you very much. See you in the next class.